I'm going to talk to you now about motivation, about whether you really want to stop smoking because, you know, a lot of therapists, um, NHS nurses, you go to them and you say, I think I want to stop smoking, but I don't think I want to enough. And what they tend to say is, well, come back when you are sure. And I want to explain to you why that's wrong, why you do want to uh, stop smoking, even if you're not sure that you do, or even if you think you don't. But then I guess you wouldn't be listening to me rabbiting on if you didn't have some notion, at least, that you want to. What people tend to say is, um, and I'm sure you've heard this, you may even have used the expression, you have to want to stop to be able to succeed. And um, it sounds like a perfectly reasonable idea, but actually it's complete tosh. Because, let's face it, if you really wanted to stop smoking, you would. You wouldn't have to listen to me, you wouldn't have to go to somebody uh, and take NHS drugs or any of those things. If you really wanted to stop, you would. So what is this about? What it's about is conflict. There's no such thing as a smoker over, say, the age of 25 who is, wants to be a smoker. Um, and yet people say, not sure that I want to stop being a smoker. So you've got conflict there. And all the while you're in that conflict, you're doing exactly what the tobacco companies want you to do. This is about them selling you a product which confers no benefit whatever on you, and we'll, I'm sure, come back to that, but confers lots of benefit on them, the seller, because you're helping them to get rich, and that's what the relationship is about. So, what we're going to talk about is how do you stop buying the product, stop making the tobacco companies rich and do yourself some good, even though you're not actually sure that's really what you want to do. So what tobacco does is it's, it makes you believe in it. We're going to be talking about this later, psychological dependence that comes from addiction, why tobacco makes you believe and then makes you unsure that you want to stop. So what we're going to do is, we're not going to talk about, do you want to stop smoking? It's actually the wrong question. It's a question everybody asks, and it's the wrong question. Because, you know, I could go out there with a clipboard in the street, actually I've done it, um, and just stop people who are smoking and say, excuse me, um, do you want to stop smoking? And almost all of them, this might surprise you, will say no. The NHS says that 80-something percent of people want to stop smoking. Well, how silly is that? If 80% of people wanted to stop smoking, they'd all be doing it, wouldn't they? Trying to do it, and they're clearly not. So I go out there with a the clipboard, and I say to, to you, other people, um, hey, do you want to stop? Look, we've got wonderful treatment in here, wherever. Um, come in. It's completely free of charge. Totally safe. 100% effective, you'll never smoke again, would you like to come in, uh, take five minutes, that's all. Um, I can tell you now, you probably think, oh yeah, they'd be queuing up, I can tell you now, they would not. They'd be saying things like, well, not sure it's a good day, I'm under a lot of stress at the moment, are you there tomorrow? I'm very busy, can I come back, can I call you, um, is it really, really safe, and, and so on, and they'll think it's a trick and all the rest of it, and at the end of the day, we'll be sitting here twiddling our thumbs because they wouldn't come in and do it. So what we've got is a conflict between people supposedly thinking they want to stop smoking, but when you offer them something, saying, no thanks. And that's because actually, it's as I said, it's the wrong question. Instead of asking people, do you want to stop smoking? Let's try a different approach. Now let's go out with the clipboard in the street and say to people who are smoking, just want to ask you one very simple question. Looking back over the years that you've smoked, are you glad you started smoking? And I want you out there watching me to ask yourself the same question. Right now, as so I'm asking, this is not a rhetorical question, I'm asking you, are you glad you started smoking? What do you think about this really seriously? Okay, what's the answer? I know what the answer is. It's no. I've never met a smoker over the age of, say, 
25 who thinks that smoking is a good thing and therefore that they're happy that they became a smoker. And yet they would all say, I'm not sure I want to stop or I'm going to stop when I'm 30, 40, 50, or whatever, you know what it's like. So here's the conflict. We've got people who admit that they wish they hadn't started, which if you're admitting that, let's face it, means you wish right now you were someone who doesn't smoke. But at the same time, you might be saying, I'm not sure I want to stop. And this is, now you begin to understand the wrong question being asked. Not do you want to stop, it doesn't matter. Are you glad you started? If the answer is no, it means you want to be someone who doesn't smoke. Your problem is not with being someone who doesn't smoke, it's with becoming someone who doesn't smoke. You don't want to go through the process of stopping. If someone could wave a magic wand, click their finger and say, hey, it's like you've never smoked, you'd be the first in the queue, probably. But you don't want to go through the process because in your mind it's difficult, it's, it's all those things that everybody knows. So what we've got here, I'm going to introduce a word now that you may not be familiar with in this context, is fear. Smokers are afraid to stop smoking. They're not afraid to be non-smokers, they're afraid to stop smoking. Now I could go out and with a clipboard again in the street and say to people who are not smoking, excuse me, have you ever smoked? And um, let's say it's someone who stopped smoking, I don't know, six months ago, a year ago. And they, they might say, well, I stopped a while ago. And I say, okay, I've got a different, another question for you. I just want to ask, are you afraid of never smoking again? And they're going to look at me like I'm crazy and say, why would I be afraid? I could stop someone who's not smoking and say, have you ever smoked? And they say, no. And I say, are you afraid of never smoking? And they think I'm completely balmy. But if I stop someone who's smoking and say, are you afraid of never smoking again? And they actually stop because I explain to them what that means. And they think about what it means. They're going to say, yes, I'm afraid of never smoking again. It is that fear that makes you say, I don't want to stop. Or I'm not sure I want to stop. Even though you recognise that you wish you had never started. That fear is created by the tobacco companies and the pushers, the people who sell their products, the supermarket, the corner shop, whatever. You are in their control. That's the whole idea of the game. You don't want to be outside their control because that's what control means. It's like being invaded by an alien in your head. What you have to recognize now, never forget this lesson, you've now admitted to me on camera that you want to be someone who doesn't smoke. You wish you'd never started. So never ever again use the excuse, well, I'm not stopping because I'm not sure I want it. And one last word, probably, is we get people coming to us and saying, I'm not sure I want to stop smoking. And we say, okay, tell us about your smoking. And it turns out they've had a long history of trying to stop. They've used nicotine replacement products. They've been to this person, that person. And we say, hold on. How can you stand there and say, I'm not sure I want to stop, when you've been trying to stop for years? So that's another little tip for you. If you've been trying to stop, it's because you want to be someone who doesn't smoke. Your failure to stop has worked towards convincing you that maybe you don't want to. It's not true. You want to be a non-smoker. You're going to listen to the rest of these video things that you're going to see on our site and uh, you're going to enjoy them and you're going to succeed. Bye for now.